Welcome to another episode of Gems from Friends. This is a podcast about entrepreneurs, creators, and professionals. My guests will be sharing stories about their journey and what they have learned so far while building their personal brand. You can listen to the episodes on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or if you'd like to watch, you can see them on YouTube. But it's important to subscribe so that you can get notifications whenever I upload new episodes. What qualities do you normally see in a training that gets effective results? The most important quality is a will to pursue your goal. I can list benefits of living a, a healthy lifestyle, but I need them to come to the conclusion themselves. This way. is why I need a fitness. A strong way. Strong way. Every living person should be motivated by the idea of improving their quality of life. One of the main reasons why you should pursue physical activity is to improve your health. There is more nonsense on the internet than there is good information. I think when it comes to health, sometimes people feel they can be self-sufficient and end up hitting a wall. And it's at that point then they may say, okay, perhaps I should invest in the services of an expert. So you're leaving out a lot of substance mm -hmm. when you take the shortcut. Absolutely. Quick success inflates ego, but you see slow success, it builds character. Jeez, oh, this button didn't get tired. <laughs> all right, all right, buddy. There are many things that we do daily as a part of a routine of taking care of ourselves, and we cannot view physical activity any differently. You change, you structure the business. What was happening before you made that decision? I went through a lot of things, huh? When you get yourself to a place where you absolutely, truly, as the trainer, care more about the client's result than the client themselves, that's a dangerous place to live. And I actually one day had to say to myself, have I forgotten who I am? This episode is sponsored by Sajikor Bank. When I first heard about a digital bank, no more standing in lanes or driving to a branch, I thought, yes, finally the future is here. Signing up was like really easy. I downloaded an app, uploaded a profile picture and a utility bill just to confirm my address. And in no time, I was onboarded. An online agent greeted me via email and my account was set up and ready to send and receive money. Great service to me is all about the experience. And Sajikor Bank has clearly thought this all the way through and removed as many pain points as possible. Visit Sajikor.bank and give it a try. And today we have in studio certified personal trainer Dottie. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You have been able to build a, a very good brand for yourself to a point where people would be very proud to post pictures and say, body by Dottie. You aware of that? <laughs> Yes, um, they tag me usually when they do that, so yeah. I'm well aware. When we first met, mm -hmm. you, I met you as a musician. Mm -hmm. You were part of Asman, mm -hmm. and I believe that you were at UE was or it? Yeah. BCC. No, 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 I was at UE. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. UE. Yeah, yeah. And you used to spend, I don't know if you do any classes at UE because you spend the most time in the gym. Ha! Huh? I remember that. <laughs> I have a degree, sir. Okay. I, with in, honors. In what? With honors. Business management. Okay. Or not. That is not the major I started in. Um, when I did my first year at UE, I was actually doing a major in physics and math with the intention of transferring to St. Augustine to do engineering. Okay. I know that sounds like way left. <laughs> that is very left. <laughs> but yeah. Things didn't work out how I would have liked at the end of that first year. Mm -hmm. There was a blip with my transcript. It didn't go off in a timely manner. And I wasn't able to do the, the transition to St. Augustine. So the advice was to do another year of math and physics and then um, transition to St. Augustine mm -hmm. after year two. And that was not appealing to me because I wasn't convinced that I wanted to be an engineer anyway. So I wasn't okay. about to do an extra year to be in limbo just so I could right. go and pursue engineering. So after that first year, I made a quick decision and I uh, thought that it might be useful to get a degree in business management because I believe that practically every field you can get into, uh, there is a, a benefit or a use for, manager, a use for managerial skills. Mm -hmm. um, so even though I wasn't clear on what I was going to pursue as a career at that point in time, I thought having a degree in management would have to be some sort of asset. So yeah. that's what I did. And uh, yes, I was very much in Asman at the time. And, you know, it's real interesting mm -hmm. how my brain is set up because it's like I'm half left brain, half right brain, like logical, analytical, mm -hmm. 
you know, mathematical binary even. Right. And then creative expression. Right. <laughs> to the extent that. So you're telling me you're not lacking in any area. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't quite put it that way. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't quite put it that way, but um, but yeah, it is it is you know because mo most times a person is going to be either hard left or hard right. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I'm right down the middle, and perhaps it's because of you know my my eclecticism. I'm quite eclectic, and I think that would have shaped me to be mm -hmm. to be the way I am today. But yeah, man, it was. I I, I like how you said when you met me. I was a musician because I still you view still. myself as one. So. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I view sitting and playing my guitar at home as a distressing opportunity. Or what I should have said, you were only a musician because that's how I met you in that capacity. Yeah. Yeah. And you were just an artist and you to come in and we were recording the song. Yeah, that's correct. So I don't think you were training. You were training yourself, but yes. you weren't really into training others yet. Yes. Well, Probably very shortly after we recorded our first single with you, I had my first client because the the journey, the acceleration was crazy. So I started the gym in a serious way at the university when I was 18. I used to dabble a little bit with it um, in my time at Comba Mirror because I was an athlete, but it wasn't like a regimental thing mm -hmm. because coaches at that time didn't necessarily prioritize strength training in the way that they would now. So there was a gym, you mess around a little bit, but it wasn't anything serious. Um, but due to the demanding schedule of that same major, uh, math and physics, I wasn't able to play any of the sports that I was playing at Comba Mirror. Mm -hmm. And for me, physical activity was always a part of my life. So I felt there was a big void. And that is how I ended up discovering, you know, the gym and going in a regimental way because, right. I, for the, because of that need for physical activity. And let me tell you something, man, in perhaps the first six months of consistent training, I had a transformation and that transformation led to people coming asking me for tips and then mm. eventually literally to train them. Right. So I would say my first year of discovering the gym and becoming a gym person, mm -hmm. I started personal training that same year because of what I was able to achieve with my own physique. Which largely in the very beginning was just based on good genetics, what I was able to achieve. Not right. so much um, <laughs> like a, a diverse amount of knowledge. But the results I was able to garner mm -hmm. piqued my interest. And then I started to look into things and eventually um, pursued certification and, and these types of things. Okay. But like a year before that, you didn't really imagine it going that way, right? Absolutely not. It I was living my life very carefree, mm -hmm. making music with the men, yeah. and not really sure <laughs> what the next day would hold. I was literally living yeah. day to day and embracing life in that sense, mm -hmm. you know? And you were like a, a walk-in billboard for your business eventually, because people would see your physique and then like, okay, this man, what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, most times. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people see the physique and they get intimidated. And okay. they feel like um, you can't relate to them. You know, I've right. had that too. Right. So you would think like it would stand to reason a person in good shape should be a, a good personal mm -hmm. trainer. Yeah. And you would tell yourself if a person is not in good shape, then what mm -hmm. gives them the competence to help someone else? But some people get really intimidated by a fit looking trainer and would rather someone who looks a little more average, believe it or not. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> I had this conversation this morning with my wife and we we were talking and she said she don't think she would want a trainer that she's fitter than. And I understand where she's coming from. Yeah. I wouldn't want a trainer that I'm fitter than either, <laughs> which is why I work so hard to be as fit as I can be because I train myself. But talking about that now, how do you balance training yourself and still training others? How do you keep in top shape and you're pouring so much into others? How do you balance that? Honestly, that's a very good question. And it really comes down to a lot of sacrifice mm -hmm. and a real whatever it takes mindset. Because sometimes, many times, <laughs> I found myself training at the end of a work day and a long work day, a 12 hour day, 13 hour day between gyms. You're, you're mentally spent. <laughs> you're physically tired. It is 11.30 p.m. And you are now starting your workout. Right. And you're starting it 
because you have to, you know, um, I can promise you that there's no motivation at that time of the night <laughs> when, yeah. you, when you've clocked out, but when you are disciplined and you are therefore consistent, mm -hmm. then things become your routine. Right. And when they're your routine, then there's no compromise. Right. It's and it almost feel wrong when you don't get to do it. It absolutely feels wrong mm. when you don't get to do it. So even in that little period that we don't like to mention too much called the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, um, right. That was a hard time for me simply because I did not have the access to the type of work environment right. that I was accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And it, I would say it significantly affected my mental health, my mood, everything. So that is how much a part of me, um, you know, having a physical mm -hmm. regimen is. Right. You know. Are you being able to heal since that, that, that period? Yes. Um, but I do believe that. And I... I don't want this to be misconstrued, but I do believe that all humans in the process of living are always in a position where they're trying to attain their best self. So we're not always, or probably not ever, our best self, but we're we're striving for it, some yeah. of us anyway. Yeah. So am I 100% healed? Probably not. Right. <laughs> you know, things happen and people are left with scars. Yeah, interesting concept because do we ever arrive? I or don't we think just, we do. Because then... You just, what's the point after that? <laughs> you know what I mean? And anyone who is, you know, even who has even a modicum of ambition, you can always see how you can be better. So even if other people think you've arrived, mm -hmm. there's always scope to do something better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a very interesting thing that happened there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a little gem that I was dropping. Okay, you know, okay, okay. Something that I could walk away with. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> just put that in your pocket there. Like. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you talk about routines. Mm -hmm. Do you find it easy for new clients to get into the routine? Or you find that you have to coach them, not just in the workouts to do, but mindset? Is that like 50% of your job? The type of work and what I have to bring to the table will vary from client to client based mm -hmm. on people's personalities, based on people's upbringing, based on people's different life experiences. Mm -hmm. There are many um, variables. But mindset is a significant part of having a successful relationship with the client. Mm -hmm. And some of my certifications were specifically in mindset coaching. Even part of my degree, there were things that I have been able to borrow from. Interestingly, business management, what did I borrow from mm -hmm. in terms of client relationships? But in that degree, I did do some electives. And I chose psychology electives where, wherever I could. <laughs> so even though it was a business management degree with a concentration in marketing, which also has a psychological aspect, by the way, I also did psych psychology courses. So everything then, does though, right? Like everything is psychology. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Once people are involved. Once people are involved and they have something in their skull, <laughs> you know? Um, True. So yeah, so the mindset of the client is, is critical. Mm. I mean, how can a person demonstrate any discipline? How can they commit to anything unless they have the the right uh, mental frame, you know? So yeah, to to take a client from where they are to where they want to be, it does require a lot of um, mindset coaching. And it involves, we, we have something we call um, limiting factors to success. So we have to identify those and then help the client to navigate through them so that they can find themselves in a place where they are set up for success. I see you having a quizzical look on your face. So for example- Break it down into English, please. So, so for example, right? <laughs> I cannot put a person who is trained, who has the objective of uh, achieving fat loss. So therefore they need to pursue a diet that has restriction. I cannot expect them to go on a ketogenic diet, for example. Let me break that down quickly. Ketogenic diet is when you are consuming 75% or thereabout of your food is fat, fat-based. So you're mm -hmm. going to be drinking oil. You're going to be um, using things like butter. You're going to be eating fatty meats and so on. And then if you want to be truly successful with this approach, you will have to invest in things like um, indicator strips that you urine on to let you know if there are ketones in your body and therefore you're in ketosis. So the diet is actually mm -hmm. um, activated. Got it. So it can be one of the more expensive diets. Mm -hmm. Now, if budget is a limiting factor, 
you're going to have a hard time being successful pursuing one of the more expensive diets. So that will not be a, an approach that makes sense for you. So I have to eliminate the limiting factor. Budget is a limiting factor. How can we get this person to achieve their nutrition objectives with the budget they have? So you have to think about these things. Or perhaps a person is in a relationship and their partner's vegan. Right. And I don't want to go gender with it, but we have to be realistic. So let's say the, the client is female mm -hmm. and the partner is male. And we right. know how men can be in a household. I don't want the meat cooking in my house. You know what I mean? I don't want the meat cooking in my house. <laughs> don't even put it in on the frying pan. I don't want to smell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so it might not be agreeable. Yeah. The, yeah. the partner. So you got to uh, go and assess the situation, circumstances, lifestyle, and all these things. Absolutely. So, so that word right. assess is literally a very useful word because the journey with the client starts with an assessment or sometimes people refer to it as a consultation. And at that stage, yes, we take some measurements and body metrics and these types of things, but we have a sit down interview of sorts where I have to ask a variety of questions about lifestyle, life situation, health history, your upbringing, all kinds of things that get really involved so that I can be made aware of your limiting factors so that those can be either eliminated or so we can navigate through them mm -hmm. so that you can have a successful time. It is not as simple as, all right, let's go in the gym. Today we have three sets of 15 of squats. Right. And, oh, don't eat carbs. It really is not as simple so as that. So it's an onboarding process that you got to take them through. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I mean, like, even, we didn't re even talk in too long yet and I feel like, there's so much that goes into it that people don't really see on the surface. Absolutely. And it's not as easy as watching a, a train on YouTube. <laughs> it's nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people was like, all right, so instead of me paying Dotty this money, this money just go on YouTube. What would, what would you say to that part? If that person has an immense amount of discipline mm -hmm. and they have their life together, there, there's a chance that they may be able to reach their goals successfully with that approach. Mm -hmm. That person has to have a hunger for knowledge and be willing to, you know, like dedicate time to mm -hmm. really trying to understand the different processes involved right. in mm -hmm. pursuing whatever objective they're trying to pursue with their physique or health. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, it's not impossible. Right. It's not impossible at all. The reason why I would like to work with a trainer is because I want somebody to take care of the headache. Mm hmm you know, like especially when you have like a busy schedule or is it something where you don't want to have to go through a different, a whole learning process, mm -hmm. let the professional, let the trainer be the trainer, you know. Um, and people are willing to take that um, viewpoint in other aspects of your life. You decide you want to build a chattel house. You are not going to say, well, let me go and learn carpentry and build it myself. You have other things you're doing. You're being exactly. a father, you're yeah, being yeah. a husband, you work wherever you work. So... People do get it when it comes to, to other professions, but I think when it comes to health, sometimes people feel they can be self-sufficient and then a lot of times they end up hitting a wall. <laughs> yeah. And it's at that point then they may say, okay, perhaps I should invest in the services of an expert. Right. But right. The, the internet is a tricky place too. Um, anyone can put an article or do you know a vlog about any particular topic and sound like an expert. And so it can become a dangerous space if you decide to rely on it mm -hmm. for guidance. Yeah. So, so people have to be wary of that. And it's so much of it too. So much. There, yeah. There is more nonsense on the internet than there is good information. Right. And by you far. Got, and you got to be able to discern and like shift through all the, the nonsense and the clutter. Yeah. And that of itself can be stressful. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Even with persons I have worked with, clients of mine, you know, they're not immune to seeing the different videos and, 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 and posts and so on. Of people saying, you know, try this if you have back pain or yeah. do this if you really want to build your glutes. Yeah. And then they see it and they say, how can we never do this exercise? Or, you know, so it reaches them too. And then I take the time to explain to them, you know, everything you see on the internet may not be useful. Some things are for specific populations, not for others. Some things are contrary to your goal. Some things are just nonsensical and people are just yeah. doing things, you know, like clickbait. Yeah. So you have to yeah. take the time to, to explain to people these things, you know. Yeah. For me, the gym gets a little boring. Mm -hmm. You know, just the machines and just 
weights and stuff like that. So it's incorporate like, you know, tennis, which is something that even if I tired, mm -hmm. I still push through because it's competitive and you and you like it and you're yeah. having fun. So you're not really, you're taking your mind off the tiredness a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I incorporate it with. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense to me. There's no reason why you should, I mean, this is going to be somewhat goal dependent, but if your primary reason for exercise is, you know, a salubrious um, undertaking, if you are just exercising to improve your health, to mm -hmm. stay healthy and to stay fit and so on, mm -hmm. you have a wide array of possibilities in terms of how you can approach that for sure. Um, I think some people feel as though working out means you have to go to the gym and it's the only way and people end up inadvertently pursuing like a more bodybuilding type approach. But that is not, um, that is not necessary. It should certainly be something that if it is not actual fun, it's something that you can tolerate. So you need to be sensible in then how you decide to to pursue your physical activity. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Especially if it's something that needs to be consistent and you want to bring it in as a lifestyle. Because mm -hmm. I, I realize that it has to be a lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, I am that person who is go hard for a season and then is almost be the opposite for the next season. And that's not sustainable. <laughs> it's not. And at the end of the day, People will have different reasons, like primary reasons for wanting to work out, right? It may mm -hmm. be something um, aesthetic. Right. Or perhaps um, it might be something performance-based. You want to be able to run a marathon. Mm -hmm. But every living person, every living person should be motivated by the idea of improving their quality of life. And therefore, even if it is not the primary reason one of the main reasons why you should pursue physical activity is to improve your health. <laughs> Got it, sir. Got it. All right. So if, if health is going to be the driving force, then you need to be consistent. And that's why it needs to be a lifestyle thing. There are many things that we do consistently for our health that we do not think about. I'm going to assume that all humans bathe daily. <laughs> He said assume. I'm going to assume. <laughs> I don't want to speak out of turn. If not all, smart. the vast majority of us will easily bathe daily because it's healthy. The vast majority of us will brush our teeth daily because it's healthy. There are many things that we do daily as a part of a routine of taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we cannot view physical activity any differently. Right. I think people underestimate how important physical activity is and it becomes increasingly important as humans get more bright because the brighter we get the less we do the less we move we find all kinds of tech and hacks to do as little as possible to make mm -hmm. life easy right and that significantly has an impact on how physically active we are so right. it is increasingly important now more than ever just because of the lifestyle we live, it's not like we were living in times where you had to walk long distances to go somewhere to get food, you know? We don't have a walking lifestyle, mm -hmm. particularly. So we are just a, a lot more physically inactive. So more than ever, you have to start recognizing that exercising is a significant part of taking care of yourself. More important than getting your nails done or getting your hair done. We're not going to go there. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to understand what sort of podcast we were on. I know I have a better understanding. Okay, cool. We no, 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 no. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I try not to get, I don't want to get cancelled yet. Right? Uh, right, right, right. You probably needed me for next season because I'm a fairly controversial no, person. But I mean, but it's facts, right? Yeah. It's facts that you're talking. And my listeners, I go after the entrepreneurs, professionals, and creatives and stuff like that. And I believe that this conversation is important for them. Yeah. What I have learned, your goals, your business, everything you're going after is not going to be, it's not going to get bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. So you have to work on yourself, work on your, and it starts with health, right? It starts with health with and, and mindset and all that before anything else can get bigger. Absolutely. So I think that that is is fundamental. Mm -hmm. So it's not controversial in a sense. <laughs> I mean, like, but nails and, and hair and all these things are a little easier because <laughs> there's not really much pain 
involved. Mm. Where I've heard of some hair situations where persons sat down for six hours oh, wow. for a hairstyle. The longest work I have ever had a client do was two and a half hours. So I am. <laughs> but you see, the difference is, is that when that person get up from off the floor from getting their hair done or the chair, mm -hmm. <laughs> assuming <laughs> um, that they're walking away with something instant. Mm -hmm. with an instant gratification of how it looks. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you train somebody for two hours, they're not going to really see the result after that. And hours. I take that point, but I want to leave you with this, right? And this is important because we are very much an instant gratification society globally. But I want to say this, right? Quick success inflates ego. But you see slow success, it builds character. Sweet song, this button didn't get tired. Hurry, hurry, buddy. But you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it's okay to pursue instant gratification. And, and, and by the way, this is not a hit at any person who has achieved overnight success um, in their life. Right. I'm not trying to suggest that a person couldn't have had a fast track to success and that now they're an egotistical person and they don't have any character. I'm not suggesting that at all. Mm. But I am trying to suggest that the idea of having to work through something, an arduous task, having to climb uphill. Even like if you're hiking uphill and you get to the top and then you get that amazing view. Mm -hmm. There's something about that journey that molds you and shapes you. The gems is in the journey. Say again? The gems are in the journey. The gems are in the journey. Right? The gems are in the journey. Growth yeah. is a gem. Yeah. Growth is a gem. Overcoming yeah. struggle is a gem. Yeah. What do you mean? You want to miss out on that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, let's sit down and let's get this um, two hour here. Still arrive and bam, it look amazing right now. Versus looking amazing, aging gracefully, mm -hmm. aging without joint pain, looking like your best self. The, the mental capacity you develop through the growth and the struggle. Yeah. I mean, these things are priceless things. Yeah. yeah. Instant gratification fades quickly too. You sit down for those six hours, you get that hairstyle, bam, I get it today. And how long does it last? And most True. persons who are willing to sit down six hours, somehow it works all like this, who are willing to sit down six hours for a hairstyle, then won't take it out in a week, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> you sat down for six hours to wear it for a week. Anyhow, I write to change this, say, tired of this, eh? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, but all jokes aside, you have to be a person who is open to rising to the occasion of a long journey mm -hmm. because there's just so many things to be derived from a long journey. So many things. So you're leaving out a lot of things or a lot of substance mm -hmm. when you take the shortcut. Absolutely. Makes sense. Especially the, the, the potential and the opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we should all be concerned about growing because if you're not growing, then you're stagnant. You're not moving forward. Mm -hmm. And what is more stagnant than uh, let's say a pillar of salt. If you don't move forward because you're looking back, like let's say Lot's wife, who was turned into a pillar of salt, yeah, that don't move forward at all. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we should always be concerned with moving forward, growing. Progress. Yeah. Otherwise, you stay the same place, and the world goes along and leaves you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that goes back to what people determine as success. Mm -hmm. And I think they go after the outcome and not so much the in-between. And that's where we get that instant gratification. It also happens when you want to get it quick and there's a level of comparison going on, especially when you're on social media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? And so when you're on social media and you're seeing this whole lifestyle lived by other people, you want to get that like right now. So... But no one is coming out and saying, you know, when you do it that way, it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. Or when you do it that way, it's probably fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no one is telling the real stories. No one is telling the real stories. So then people are feeling like they are failing mm -hmm. at life. Mm -hmm. Comparison is a very unhealthy thing if misdirected. The only comparisons that I believe individuals should strive to make are comparisons that are internal. You're right which goes back to the same idea of moving forward versus being the pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How am I today versus how I was yesterday? That is the comparison a person should make. 
You cannot compare yourself to another individual who has a, who has a completely different life experience to you. Complete different Com path. Completely different path. Completely different mindset. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. How can you? Mm -hmm. We're all starting from different places. We all have different life experiences. So it that's like, can you compare apples to oranges? It's not. It's, no. it's not a comparison. Two completely different things, you know. Yeah. So, in terms of like for you, no, know, you said earlier that some people will be intimidated by your physique and whatever, and you think that you will actually, instead of gaining them as a client, you actually lose them as a client. It becomes a downfall. It can be a downfall, Is and it, it comes down to relatability. Relatability. People will say things like. You've never been overweight in your life, which, by the way, is not quite true, but we'll get into that. Um, you've never been overweight in your life, so you don't really understand my struggle when you're asking me to do these, to do these things that I find so challenging, you know? Um, and that type of person may prefer to be with someone that they think understands their struggle. Mm -hmm. But I always say to that, you know, I have competed in, in bodybuilding before. And the journey to be ready to step on stage, the approach is generally the same as someone who has an extra 50 pounds to lose to get into good health. Yeah, it's to, not more intense. It can be. Mm. I have, due to um, all of my years of study, discovered that it does not have to be as intense as some people make it. <laughs> So like, just put it in plain terms, some people will be getting ready for a bodybuilding show and they will literally go on a diet, a strict diet of boiled chicken and broccoli and drink water, the end. Wow. And then coming on to the week of the show, they'll stop drinking water. Yeah. They, will, they will stop drinking water and get to a point where they're sucking a block of ice. Really? There's right. a stereotype thing that says that um, men with muscles has got small brains. <laughs> I feel that we need to walk away from stereotypes. Yes. I think that there has been a lot that has happened throughout history mm -hmm. that show us that stereotyping. Most times you Correct. end up embarrassing yourself. Correct. But um, some of the most intellectual people that I follow on social media, YouTube, these places are muscular people because the truth is, if you are a smart person, you'll take care of your body. And if you take care of your body, you'll get your body in good shape. And then as you get your body in good shape, because you're smart, you will seek more knowledge. Correct. And some of the brightest people I know are in great physical shape. And most of them are in great physical shape because they're muscular. Because at the end of the day, having a certain amount of muscle is optimal health. Right. Well, people, I, people only think of keeping low body fat levels, but having a certain amount of muscle, absolutely optimal health. Well, I, I guess, um, and not to offend anybody, but maybe people that say that men with muscles got small brains is probably people without muscles. Ah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> right? Possibly. But so what is one of the biggest misconceptions about you? Mm. About me? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it might be the same thing you mentioned just now. People might think that I am, until they hear me speak, might think that I am um, all, all brawn and no brains. People think that because you look a certain way that you have a big ego. Right. And I feel, you know, that that is not always something that people should walk away concluding until they've at least had the opportunity to speak with you. I feel like people tend to make judgments without getting to know a person. And this is a problem that people have in general. They make judgments. It's what's what they say, the cliche, um, don't judge a book by its cover. cover yeah. Right. People do that a lot. Um, and I can understand why you might feel that a person who takes care of themselves and carries themselves a certain way may have an inflated sense of ego, but you really can't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's probably the primary uh, misconception or myth that people feel about me. People might feel like because you are in great shape that you are unrelatable, you do not understand their struggle. And I'm saying that the same process that a person who needs to drop weight to improve their health, the same process they need to go through mm -hmm. um, is a process that I have gone through in my life. So I totally understand the, the struggle. Mm -hmm. And I did make a little point that people would say, you've never been overweight when referring to me. And they said, well, yeah. that's not quite true. And by that, I meant based on some of the medical industry's standards, I am considered overweight. So there's a, there's um a metric called BMI, body mass index, which basically 
um, dictates what weight range a person at a specific height should be. And for my height, I'm a little bit heavier oh, really? than the okay. recommended BMI. But mm. that is because of the amount of muscle I carry. And muscle is, is dense tissue. So BMI says I'm overweight. But that can mislead people into thinking, wait, overweight. Well, he needs to lose weight. He probably is at mm. risk of some type of um, health issue. But in the instance that the weight is coming from largely muscle tissue, then it is not a health crisis. It is actually a very good scenario to be in because muscle tissue uh, having a certain amount or more than BMI says is actually more beneficial to you mm -hmm. versus if you're overweight because of adipose tissue, body fat, high body fat. Now you have um, some health concern because um, you might be at risk of a variety of NCDs, for example. Okay. If you're not battling, um, battling them currently in your overweight state, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so yes, a person may say, well, this man is in great shape. Maybe he, maybe I don't want him as a trainer because he doesn't understand my struggle. He doesn't understand what it is to have to eat less or to avoid, um, you know, sweet treats and certain foods that make life easier to live. And I say, no, that's not true. I've been there. I've absolutely been there in the roughest sense because I've, I've been there in a situation where um, there was a lot of pressure to compete and make a good showing for myself so you know yeah. and, then, and then you're training in situations where you're doing certain um, diet techniques that are kind of extreme and you still have to go to the gym and you're tired and your body fat low your body fat at five percent and you just have no motivation to live mm -hmm. and then you're going and train so i mean absolutely i know what it is to struggle absolutely and you should never assume that because a person is in, in is in great shape that they don't know struggle and that they can't relate to your struggle right that makes sense. What makes a good trainee? What qualities do you normally see in a trainee that get fast results or effective results? The most important quality is a will to pursue your goal. Mm -hmm. The most important quality is a will to pursue your goal. If you have a strong will to pursue your goal, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. And that is why sometimes I challenge clients to come to me with a meaningful reason for starting a fitness journey. And I don't tell them what the reason should be, even though I know what everyone's reason should be, which is that you should want to live a high quality of life, a life free of disease, a life free of aches and pains. You should be trying to be your best self from a healthy standpoint so you can be best at other things. Like you can't do other things if you're not healthy. Correct. How can you be um, financially successful if you have to spend all your money in medical bills? Right. You know, how can you offer anybody anything of value in terms of how you speak to them if you don't have mental clarity because you don't exercise you know what i'm saying i encourage persons to dig deep and find a meaningful reason for starting a fitness journey and if you can do that then you will have that strong will to pursue it if your if your desire to pursue a fitness journey is a fleeting desire something superficial is not rooted in anything meaningful then you're probably not going to be successful. Mm. But I need the client to come to that realization themselves. So I don't tell them, well, listen, you, you, you know, this is the reason why you should pursue a, a fitness journey. I can list benefits of living a, a healthy lifestyle. I can list the benefits, but I need them to come to the conclusion themselves. To get our way. This is why I need a fitness. A strong way. Strong way. But let me tell you something. Um, <laughs> and you could tell me your experiences with with clients as well. Mm -hmm. Nothing don't get people training like a heartbreak. Ha! Ha! Ah! 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 Ha! Fox. <laughs> Absolute fox. I had a client I was working with one time, man, and he went through something rough. You hear what I tell you? He went through something rough. And we was doing squats that day, right? Mill, right? We, we was doing squats. And his PR, his, his 10 rep PR was... I think like three plates a side, 315, mm -hmm. right? 315 pounds. And the day the man come in the gym and the man, we work up to the 315 and we were supposed to do the three sets of 10 at the 315. After the first set, the man was like, put on another plate. So this man won't go from 315 to 405. The man was like, put on another plate. They said, whoa there, brother. Whoa there, whoa there. What do you mean by you? We want to add 90 pounds to this? 
למעשה, if I die, I die. And if I don't, my legs will be big. <laughs> so you are correct, sir, heartbreak. That's a strong motivator, boy. That is a strong motivator. <laughs> is there any other motivators that you came across? Definitely um, near death or pseudo near death experiences. So like, let, let's say you went to your doctor and he said, listen to me. Things don't look good here at all. You need to do something about your way immediately or you can mm. dead in tree. Like if your daughter tell you something. So Desperation. Then. Yeah, that can light a fire under people's butts for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I would say probably those two are the main ones that really can shake a person into, into getting their act together. Then there's, there's smaller ones, but those ones are not, they don't have any longevity. Things like, um, you know, a person won't get into the best shape they can for their wedding or... okay. Things like that can get a person really fired up too, but it can fizzle yeah. because the wedding will come and go. Yeah, yeah, and if you don't feel it, you, if it get close and you don't feel it, you're there, then you're happy to give up too. So like it's three months away, you're like, I ain't nowhere near where I need to be. This wedding will take whatever body I give it. <laughs> <laughs> Crop over will take whatever body I give it. So you, you would know? say that this, because I mean like hearing you speak and me even going through my personal journey, is almost like 80% mental. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's not even just about your body, but everything is, is what happened up here. Mm -hmm. What is the, re the relationship between exercising and mental health? I think they're married, to be honest. Um, the, the benefits to mental health as it relates to exercise are widely documented. Even from something as... Um, straightforward as, you know, enhancing blood flow to the brain, mm -hmm. um, improving your VO2 max and what that can mean for brain health. Obviously, the, be the benefits of workout, workouts on enhancing mood. Some people may say they don't feel it, but there are certain hormonal responses to exercise and the hormones that are secreted and how they're secreted match the type of um, hormone behavior you see when people's moods are lifted or when people engage in activities that improve mood. Yeah. So there's definitely a relationship between exercising and enhancing your mood, improving mood. And again, there are things that persons who exercise may ingest that also help with that. Caffeine, a lot of persons who work out will use coffee or even pre-workouts that have in caffeine and caffeine is a, is a mood enhancer. Um, so yeah, so there there's definitely a lot of uh, mental benefit and, and, and benefits to mental health from an active lifestyle. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And then even if you just think about, about it in a more indirect way, you engage in physical activity, you pursue a fitness lifestyle, your body starts to take shape. You start to look and feel better. What does that do for self-esteem? How does that change how you view the world? Yeah. Or like the, the, the discussion we were having before about um, the long journey to success, the one that is, is riddled with obstacles or overcoming arduous tasks, the growth that comes from that, and then the sense of accomplishment, what type of paradigm shift does that cause in an, in, in, in an individual? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So some of these would be indirect ways to improve mental health too. Like True. your whole view of the world can change yeah. because of having a physical activity regimen, you know? Yeah, I, I realize that too. And um, and it's important to, when you make a promise to yourself or, and you're working out or whatever, it's, it's good to keep it and be committed because how you do one thing it is how you do everything. So I find that when you can get discipline in the gym and, and you're exercising and you can start there, you then start to apply that. You become a more disciplined person overall. Overall. Yeah. And you start to apply that in different aspects in your life. Absolutely. Honestly, this is my, my life's mantra, right? Everything meaningful that a person will pursue in their life requ requires discipline. Mm -hmm. You want to develop a relationship with God? That requires dif discipline. You want to be a successful partner in a relationship? That requires discipline. You want to have a successful business venture? And, and reap success from your business venture, that requires discipline. You want to be healthy, that requires discipline. 
So all meaningful pursuits in life require discipline. And I'll say this, this is my life's mantra, right? The difference between who you are and who you want to be is discipline. Agreed. And what is not discipline is the instant gratification, which does not Fox. Ask. Fox. <laughs> you ever had to fire a client? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. What? what? I had two, two persons that I had to fire in the 20 years I was doing personal training. And the reason why it's only two is because I destroy the people, boy. You do what? I destroy. You just people. try. Like, okay. I try. Patient. I try. And, and one of the main reasons why I try is because if I can see a person's potential, it's hard for me to let them go. Mm -hmm. It is so hard for me to let them go because I can see what you can be. But I had to come to the realization um, deep into my career that potential is not reality. Potential is not reality. You, 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 you wish it would be. You wish a person would self-actualize and, and extract who they can be, but potential is not reality. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when, it, when I, it is getting to that point with a person that allows me to feel like I can let them go. When I realize that maybe I'm not in a position to help them realize their potential mm. but as long as they can see the potential I, I just want to fight bad and sometimes even and this is not a healthy place to go as a trainer but sometimes you even find yourself in a place where you don't want to let a person go because you view your inability to get them to where they need to be as a shortcoming on your part you don't view it as a shortcoming on their part because you understand that they come to you as a person. That's interesting. Yeah. So you understand that they come to you as a person who may be broken in some way. They come to you as a person whose parents never made them eat vegetables. And there's a point in your life, in your, in your infancy, where what you are fed will kind of determine who you are as an adult in terms of your taste profile and how your palate works. So you understand these things. So when you have a person who's 37 saying to you, I don't like vegetables and I'm not going to eat them. The knee jerk thing is like, you idiot, man. Come on, man. You're an adult, man. What do you mean? Come on now. That's the knee jerk response. But I can see beyond them throwing a tantrum in the moment because I understand that their parents failed them in their childhood. So now I have to be like, how are we going to get this person to eat some vegetables? So, right. And then you go home and you think about this at three o'clock in the morning when you should be sleeping. You think about what strategy you can employ to get them to act right because you can see their potential and you can tell that they're going to be glorious and mighty if they get it right. You know, you can tell. So you can't let it go. So that has put me in a position where like I, I do not readily fire people. Do not write it. And then, and then getting to know a person and, and, and understanding how a person thinks. You just see all of the things that made them who they are. And then you understand that it's not really their fault. It's not their fault. You know, and then I make I can see that in myself. Yeah. And I can forgive myself where I need to and tell myself what I need to work on. And I am a work in progress. Mm -hmm. There are two, and people are at different stages in their life. So the two people I fired i fired them because i got to a place where i felt like me trying with them was becoming actually unhealthy for me so like when you get yourself to a place where you absolutely truly as the trainer care more about the client's result than the client themselves cares that's a dangerous place to live because mm -hmm. there's only so much you have you have control over yeah and, and, and it can really like put a strain on the relationship if you find yourself there. And then sometimes you just have to be able to cut your losses and say to the person, listen, I enjoyed this experience with you. However, at this point, I do not think that I'm the best fit for you. Here are some recommendations. Right. And then any person that crossed you in the field before, any other trainers that said something bad about you, you recommend them. Mm-hmm. So that they can get this issue to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you establish boundaries. You yeah. know what those boundaries are, and you, you know, you enforce them. Yeah. So talking about that, you recently made a change mm -hmm. in your business structure, mm -hmm. where your programs are now 
online. Is that correct? Not quite. So I've always had um, some online versions of boot camps that I teach. Right. Um, so that has always been there. But what has happened is I have taken a step back from personal training, like the physical hands-on training persons in gyms. Mm -hmm. I've retired from that. And now I'm exclusively offering boot camps from time to time across the year and virtual fitness services. So if a person wants to invest in a nutrition plan, they can still develop a nutrition plan and send it to them and nutrition coach them through the, the nutrition plan. Or I can write um, workout plans and do the same thing. Check in with them, see how it's going, update the plan right. monthly and that type of thing. But as it relates to working 12, 13 hours in a gym daily, six days a week, I've had a long journey with that. I feel very fulfilled. I cannot feel any more gratified. I'm thankful and I will bow out and upcoming trainers will be able to change lives like I did. Okay. So you basically made a change so that you have like more time and are you just got... Yeah. So this is so interesting. So people talk about work-life balance, right? And most times when they talk about work-life balance, they're talking about making hard boundaries in their life while they're working so that they can do more than just work. Right. And I feel like I almost did the work-life balance in a, in a long game, like chess way, because I feel like I have worked my fingers off. Worked my, yeah, because this is a polite, this is a polite podcast. Worked my fingers off, worked really hard, right? For 20 years. I know the balance part. I know the me part. I know the enjoy life and connect to different things. Part. Right, right. I know the mental clarity part. I know the not exhausted anymore part. I know the let's get back into some creative expression part. And let's mm. live a little more part. I've you. been oh living God. so much for others. And I've dedicated my life to that. 20 years is an era. It's, it's a lifetime. And now I'm going to focus mm. on me a bit more. Because I was going to ask you, you, you took so much time and pour into others. Mm -hmm. Who's pouring into you? Mm -hmm. Well, my family pours into me for sure. I have okay. I have a lovely family. I have kids. Oh yeah, you've been married for how many years? Fifteen. <laughs> well, fifteen. Um, and kids, right? You yeah, I have four kids: two girls, two boys. Wow. And I have a good support system where that is concerned, you know. So, and they help the ship run. You know, they all help the ship run. Do trainers have trainers? Many trainers have trainers. Uh, having a trainer is a useful thing. Um, in my life, I have not had trainers per se, but I've had training partners. Mm -hmm. Um, there was one bodybuilding show that I had a coach for, um, but that person didn't necessarily train me. They just would have looked at me from week to week. And cause it's really hard to assess yourself with your eyes when you are preparing for a bodybuilding show. Cause you're using mirrors, mirrors can tell some lies. Your brain can lie your to brain. you, <laughs> you know? So... But yeah, but in terms of my own fitness journey, I've never had a personal trainer, but I've had some really good training partners along the way. People that would train with me and we push each other and it'd okay. be a good vibe, you know? As a personal trainer, what makes you different to the others? I would say my unwavering capacity to establish a client relationship. Okay. I feel like many trainers focus only on this is the workout, this is the diet, and don't get to the core of people, which I think is critical for helping them to be successful. And when you take that approach, you end up helping them beyond just their appearance or just their actual physical health. Mm -hmm. You end up improving their lives. You know, the... There have been situations where I have been told that I saved marriages because of my impact through personal training on the life of a client. Okay, that's interesting. So it's not so much just aesthetics and just what you see on the surface, but you repairing homes. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But I mean, we talked, saving lives, you know? we talked about the impact on mental health of exercise. Yeah. And, and you have to pair some nutrition with that too, because, you know, eating well, even sleep, all these things are, are uh, part of the, the bigger picture of health. So sleeping well, 
eating well and remaining physically active in a regimental way, that improves the human. And then an improved human is going to have better relationships with their workmates, mm -hmm. with their life partner, with their children, mm -hmm. with their parents, you know. So we can't underestimate the the importance of pursuing a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. I want to talk about a little bit when you got to the point where you kind of like change the structure of the business. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to do so much hours in the gym anymore. Mm -hmm. What were giving you those indicators? What was happening before you made that decision? I was, I went through a lot of things huh? Um, in the latter part of the journey that were not necessarily um, based on experiences in the career per se, but just life happenings. And I think they had a measure of an impact on my general zest for life and energy. And then I feel like that caused me to maybe feel burnt out to some degree. And I started thinking, you know, there's more to life than work. And there's a lot of living I haven't been doing. And it might be time to pivot and start to look at other things in my life. Um, You know, things things in life can be so blindsiding sometimes. You be living your life, you know, you're living day to day, you get into a routine and that's your life. And then blam, a pandemic. And then blam, someone close passes away. Mm -hmm. And then blam, someone close commits suicide. Bro. And then blam, you're about to do a fitness session with John Doe and he drops to the floor. Right. And you're doing CPR, trying to hopefully keep this man alive. All of these happenings. And then you start to think about life. Is this literal? or This is literal. Everything I've said there is personal and literal. You were there? I absolutely was doing CPR. I absolutely was. There. Me and another trainer were taking turns. Well, I didn't even know that. Well, I mean, it's not going to be something that people would know. But... um. Lots of different things can happen at random in life. And then you have to reflect and then you have to start to think about what is your purpose? What does your life mean? Who are you? Am I only my work? You know? That's interesting because while building a personal brand, sometimes you can get, it's so intertwined personal and business that you almost cannot differentiate the two anymore. You know, as some people go through parts in their life where they're not working, they, they feel like they're not existing because their identity is sewn into the professional side. And that's exactly who it was. That's exactly who it was. And I actually one day had to say to myself, have I forgotten who I am? There's so much more to me than this that I have yeah. kind of just shut away to focus on this. And it wasn't out of a place of self-mutilation. It wasn't like I was trying to deaden who I am because I didn't like who I was. Mm -hmm. It was that I loved what I was doing so much. And I don't know if this is a like a male thing, but I feel it might be more associated with males than female. But people in general, maybe some types of people have the capacity to be so tunnel vision sometimes and so focused that you can fall into something and just forget everything else. Yeah. So like even like back in the day when we used to record, I would come in the studio and the vibe hitting, you know, mm -hmm. and the process flowing. And you did not realize that seven hours passed. Yeah, boy. And then you check your phone and you got all these missed calls and like, are you even alive? Do you even love me? You know? You like, come in when it was dark. Sorry, when it was um, the sun out and uh -huh. you laugh when it's dark. You, sometimes, sometimes I've been in studio situations where you get to the studio when the sun is up. And when you come out, the sun is up. It up again. Are you like, wait. Complete circle. I skip a day. Like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> you know? So 
Yeah, so because of the capacity to be so tunnel vision with even like acute things like that, imagine you find a career that you love. <laughs> like you love it. It is so fulfilling. And then you've got that tunnel vision mentality. You can fall into there and forget everything else that's going on on the outside. Right. But then some of those things that you forget about yourself are important things. Yeah. And then you find yourself, if you if you can get to this place of discovery, you find yourself realizing that you need to pull pull those things back out. Pull them back out. Yeah. They need to they need to live. So look at it this way too, right? Because there's so much different stages and processes because there's also a stage where before that you're trying to find your purpose yeah you're trying to find what is going to give you that fulfillment mm -hmm. you go through that process trial and error good curiosity you get exploring feel win etc you find it and then when you find it then you gotta learn how to escape from it yes <laughs> Yes. Yes. And you, and there's this whole... It comes full circle. Full circle. Yeah, it comes full circle. And there's a lot of growth in that. A lot of growth, a lot of anxiety, but a lot of healing. Mm -hmm. You can heal when you do that. Mm -hmm. You know? Sometimes we don't even realize the scars that we pick up along the way as we live. And then something happens, and then you think, and then you make the circle. And then you heal. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. That was deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have this thing um, where this new thing, my guests have to leave a gem mm -hmm. for the next guest. Mm. We don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. Having said that, someone left a gem for you. Oh. <laughs> they don't know it's for you because yeah. we don't know who's next, right? Uh -huh. So I am going to play this gem. But this gem that sh this person left mm -hmm. is a little different because mm -hmm. the other gems were verbal. Mm -hmm. But this one is a little different because of who it is. Mm -hmm. So let me see if it connects to you. Mm -hmm. And then you leave your gem. Okay. Right? Ooh, that's my gem person. Yeah. Chee! So I, I just want this experience. Mm -hmm. This to more be a way for you to slow down, to bring clarity into your thoughts. It is a breathing, ex um, breathing exercise. It's called block breathing. So how you do it, you breathe in for a count, for a couple counts. You try to hold your breath for a couple counts. You breathe out and you hold again for a couple counts. When I say hold, it's like you're not breathing in or out. You're literally just holding. So let's do it. Well, I won't be able to do it while I talk. That's fine. But let's try. So you go. So empty your lungs. Empty, empty, empty. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. And hold, one, two, three, four. A lot can happen when you're being still. Sometimes you just have to kind of let it happen. You don't have to control everything. And that was left here for you. Well, that was particularly calming. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's one area of my life that i have not given a lot of attention to yeah like deep breathing and i see 
a lot of talk about that nowadays. Mm -hmm. About the benefits of breathing and even pairing it with like reflection and meditation. Yeah. So yeah, perhaps that is a little um a little push for me to start taking things like that a little more seriously and looking into into those types of things. We also had a discussion about um obviously like like men going into the gym mm -hmm. just want to pump air and lift mm -hmm. heavy things or whatever, but we don't really put focus on the the calm breathing, mm -hmm. the deep breathing. Mm -hmm. So I think this was was good for you. Yeah. The last time I did a breathing exercise was prior to a performance when it was in the band. Really? Yeah. For sure. Because you know you do breathing exercises as, yeah, yeah. as an entertainer, as a singer. Yeah. That's, and that's many years ago. Well, <laughs> that's like 2012. So yeah. what comes to your mind? Mm -hmm. What comes to your heart to share to my next guest? For my next guest? Well, I don't know who the person is. We know. But I think, <laughs> I think that this may be useful to some person, many people. I would say simply this. Remember who you are. That was like your shortest one, but it's very impactful. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Got it. <laughs> and before I jump back into the conversation, I want to take a moment to talk about our sponsor for this episode, GibbsDirect.com. As a business owner, time is precious. I don't have a lot of time to be driving around searching for products, especially supplements that support my active lifestyle. That's where GibbsDirect.com comes in. It's an online store based here in Barbados. And let me tell you, their user-friendly website makes it real easy for me to find what I want, add it to my virtual shopping cart, and then place my order. I can then pick up the items at their convenient pickup location the same day. And here's the best part. You listeners get access to a discount today. Just type the word GEMS as your promo code at the checkout to unlock your savings. So whether you're a busy entrepreneur like me or are just someone that is just looking for convenience and quality products, be sure to check out GibbsDirect.com. Okay, now let's get back to the conversation. All right. Um... I, before we completely wrap, mm. I just want to touch a little bit about the other side of you. Um, cause you know, we had a discussion where we are not one dimension is more to the muscles, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, and we talk about your, you being an artist, mm -hmm. what is happening in that world for you right now? Okay. So I was in the band and it was in the band for that was about 10 years, more than 10 years. I was in the band for about 14 years or thereabouts. And I mean, it would have changed shape over that time and people would have come and gone and so on. So that was literally who I was at the time. Like it was a significant part of my life. To the extent that you said something that was sort of true when you said, when you met me, allegedly it was going to you, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, you just know me to be like music and I had some muscles, right? Um, uh, yeah, music was, music was my life's soundtrack and fitness was the script, something like that. Wow. Okay. And some different things happened and I ended up leaving the band. And bro, I was lost for a time, not lost musically, lost as a person. It's like something died in me when I left that band, big man. What was the name I don't of the band even for people know. That don't know. The band was called Asman, and we were onto something uniquely special because when we started, this might sound so far into people, but when we started in the landscape of Barbadian music, people did not appreciate Bajan dialect. So the only genre of music being produced by Bajans where there was a distinct Bajan identity in terms of the sound was soca. We had tons of people that were talented who were producing hip hop and rap and dancehall and everyone had the twang associated with those genres. So you had Bajan artists singing dancehall and putting on literally a Jamaican accent. Yeah. You had Bajan artists singing hip-hop songs rap songs and they had american dialect american accent and there was no representation in barbadian music with bajan dialect 
Bajan accent, Bajan slang. And we were saliently aware of this. And it was our mission to give Barbadian music an identity. And we came up with our own genre. We called it Fling. Fling. And I remember for, that. Yeah. And for a long time, we were the only people producing Fling music. And then out of that um, emerged that whole period with Crimson and Crab Soldier, mm -hmm. Early Brutal. People don't even know Early Brutal Boy. <laughs> but our guitarist was Brutal's first producer, a man named Marlon Fox. Yes, big yes. Marlon. Yeah, big man. Fox big old, full. Yeah, Fox Hole Productions, <laughs> man. Um, and a lot of those men would pay homage to us. Even Crimson had a song where he used to say "Bigger as man" because it was on a one hour beats too. Because we used to make the the, the beats and thing. And um, you know, those men would pay homage to us, and and they became like the first iteration after us of a collective of musical expression that was, as Bajans would say, in right Bajan, right, right Bajan. It was right. so wonderful to hear. Like you hear, you heard it and it felt like home. And then out of that, then you get like Mole and all of these men. And now we got a sign called Bashmut Soka that seems like the most type of Bajan thing you can imagine. Yeah. And then you also have Bajan dancehall artists happily doing it in a Bajan dialect, like um, Chief Din and, and Menso. So it wasn't simply that I was in a band. I was in a situation where I was shaping Barbadian history and to, to the point that it's so historical that a lot of people living now don't even know about don't it. Know, yeah. They don't even understand how these things came to be. And you plant that seed, you and the group plant that seed early. Early, right? And so you can imagine like how much of my life that cons how, how, how much of, of my life that consumed mm -hmm. right that was like significantly who I was so to leave the band after all of that work and uh, and that life experience I think something broke in me I don't think it repaired yet boy really like so serious so probably for up to five years after I left the band I did not do anything musical at all. Oh, wow. Not even listen to the radio, big man. I used to drive in silence. So he was in mourning. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that you were in mourning. Yeah. Are you getting back there now? Yeah, because I mean, I've since done um, some works, not necessarily for the public domain. Mm -hmm. So I literally did an, an EP. Um, but I didn't put it out there. So you didn't do an EP for yourself? <laughs> I feel like I did an EP. I am not the most emotionally expressive person. Okay. I can be very stoic in appearance, at least. Mm -hmm. So that means that there is not really much of an outlet to emote because it's just my personality. It has a lot to do with my upbringing, my family situation. I come from a almost sterile household i don't know how else to 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 to, mm -hmm. to say but so emotions are strange for me and emoting is foreign but i feel like music is my outlet to emote and not just music because i mean i've written poems all kinds of stuff in my life so creative expression is my emoting right so i believe that the ep was me wailing right like i was crying that was my version of crying that was your therapy that was my therapy bro that right. was my first thing i did that was a musical production a collection of my expression um after leaving the band that's i think that's that's good that's good to know because not every single thing has to become a project for the public mm -hmm. it could just be something for you mm -hmm. Our, you know, so, and it's therapy, as you call it, mm -hmm. as we call it. Yeah, man. So we got to wrap it up here. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you for coming through. Um, Thanks for you, having me, man. You have been so consistent mm -hmm. throughout the years. You're someone that I look up to when it comes to this, just being a, not just business or just fitness, but there's so much to you, obviously, because I knew you from before. Yeah. So, you know, the musical side I got to see the journey going into fitness and 
not just for yourself, but you were able then to pass that knowledge on to others and change other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And um, and you also have a vast of knowledge in, in a lot of different areas. That we, could, I mean, like, if we really had to sit down and have a conversation, this might turn into a four or five hour conversation. Facts. Right? <laughs> so there's more to the muscles. I, yeah. I mean, we need people to understand that and mm -hmm. that you're not just this model walking around, but you are a person with feelings, you might not be able to emote, <laughs> as you said, but you have talent that you can express. Yeah. yeah. You know, and there's a lot of knowledge and you have been, been a person to have done your homework. You know the science, mm -hmm. the psychology. You also understand how to talk to people and break down the client and really get into their heads. Because by talking to you, I realize it is more than just telling somebody do 10 reps. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's more to it than that. That's way feeling from, from the, our conversation and even just the journey of the consultation all through to the, the result. Mm -hmm. And then you're giving people the information to continue and that there's not a finishing line, but it's a lap. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. <laughs> that is a wrap. Data has shown that over 60% of you watching these videos are not subscribed yet. It would be a great support to me and the channel if you can just click that subscribe button and hit your notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I drop a new episode.